and morning again for everybody that is joining me today. Um, my name is Ninka Kruger, for those of you that don't know me, I'm the Product Manager for the Financial Reporting on KSRI. So IFRS, SME, XPRL, those are all the one products that I am responsible for. Just a few um, logistics things today. If you cannot hear me at any time, please put up your hand or you can type in the questions. We're not a big group today, so I'm going to try to keep an eye out for those. I know we have load shedding and fiber cables and everything that's a problem, so we're going to try to, to go through this webinar without any events, but if we do so, we'll monitor it on our side. There is also going to be a recording, so you will be able to watch it again later if you would like to. Then um, just a bit of intro, like I say, I'm the product manager for the financial reporting, but before I have been in this role, I have worked extensively on case of preparing financial statements, specifically for corporate clients. So I was first at an audit firm and then at a smaller firm. And I've really realized that there was quite a lot of different nuances if you are a corporate firm, especially because you normally only use the software once a year. So today is really a very high level refresher on um, on what has happened in the past year, like how to update, where to get your software if you may be new. But if by any means, if you have any questions during the session that I can't answer, if we don't have time for, reach out to myself or your account manager if you need additional training or consulting or anything to that regards. I am going to switch off my camera just for bandwidth that everybody can hear me and rather see the screen because I think that's much more important. So what we're going to cover today is firstly the latest template in the software, but then we're going to have a brief like where's your file located, where do you save it, how do you update it and the update options available. Then I'm going to show you the data retention view. This is specifically if you want to see what has changed from your previous file and then we're going to have a quick look at customized note. I'm going to go through quite a few hyperlinks as well, which is on our community. I will put all of them on the chat when we are done and I'll keep the GoToWebinar open at the end. So you will have access to all of those links as well if you want to go and have a look at them again. Great, so let's start with the latest release. So we historically, we released once a year um, as a major release that we have. So our last release was on 15 November and that included financials, working papers and also all the audit products. Um, we tried to do it um, historically, I want to say 10 years ago, it was probably once a year around October, November is normally the cycle that we work with. But if there is a compliance reason, then we do um, cater for either another release that we'll have around in July or we will then like in this year have a release in July and not in October but I'll come to that a bit later. So what that means is the latest software release notes everything that I'm talking to about today is already available and has been for some time. If you have downloaded it since November, you would already have the templates installed on your computer. It's the 2023 template but if not I'll show you also where you can get those. So we have in detail what's new webinar that's in our YouTube channel and then we also have release notes that we issue with each and every release that's available on our community. But I do think it will be useful just to go through the high level changes that we've made. This is, is not a, a complete list and definitely if one of these is um, relevant to you, go and read about it a bit more. But I just thought I'll go through the, the main ones quickly. So if you are, um, the first three is for SME and for IFRS. So the cash flow worksheet improvements, we have um, had quite a bit of feedback from the market from some improvements that people wanted there. Not necessarily um, major change on how it works, works still exactly the same. We had very, very positive feedback on the workflow and how it works. It's more for specific transactions, but we didn't necessarily cater for it to maybe go in one or two other places. So lots of detail on the specific transactions and what it relates to, like I say in the release notes. For the tax for both these templates, we've included um, the pillar two tax. I know it's not relevant yet in South Africa and it might not be, but we have included with this release if it might become available or if it becomes relevant and also if you have entities that is not in South Africa. So there is some um, 
information there. There was also improvement on the income tax note, the recon, that you have an undefined difference there. And then we also had on the tax compensation itself, we had lines that asked us for the assessed loss limitation, that want a bit of a recon or workings on that. So that we've included in the tax comp. So like I said, all these three things is available on both the IFRS and the SME. And then there's also some general improve improvements that we always do on each release. For the SME specifically, we've done the indirect cash flow. This is something that was never available on the SME template. We have quite a few clients that asked us for that, so we've incorporated that. It works exactly the same as on IFRS. You have a you go to your settings and you have a button that you can select and you can um, you have your indirect flow if that's what you want. And then we've also updated our body corporate template if that is something that you're using to be in line with what the Psycho Illustratives now is showing. And then for IFRS, big change there so is the accounting policies. So for those of you that are in the IFRS space, you'll know the IS1 have changed quite significantly, not, not at all. It's actually just a one line of change but it had quite a significant impact. So we have really looked at all the accounting policies. We have, so there's brand spanking new ones, but we did also keep the old ones in for you if you would think that they are more relevant to your entity. If you have tailored them before, they will also retain what you've tailored, so you wouldn't lose that as long as you have done it in the right way, meaning your super insert standing on the right way and copied it over in that one. So if any of these are applicable to you or more relevant, please go and look at the release notes. Right, then where do I get my software? So if you have forgotten or if you're new, I'm going to take you through it. So we have a success community and I am going to jump between screens. I'm just going to move this one over that I can show you here. So this is our success community. And you'll see that a lot of the reference that I have to today will come from here. If I talk about the release notes, if I talk about videos, if I talk about your software, it all is on our community. So if you go here to your login, if you click on your login, you'll get a screen like that. And if you have login details, it will come up there. If you don't, you then can click on register now. And if you have any troubles, again, reach out to your account manager and they can help you with it. And But otherwise, you can just log in there. As soon as you've logged in, it, you will get access. It will look the same, but you'll get access to a little bit more. So here, if you click at the top, you'll see here is my software, my training, my licenses, all of those information that you need. So the software that you'll use is, if you click on my software, will already be available here. And you can click on launch, download, and whatever is then on your um, account available will be launching and will be a download package that you can download. So if you do not, like again, just reiterate, if you do not have login details, then um, please ask the register now, contact your account manager. If you don't know who your account manager is, you're welcome to contact me. And then um, also if you click on the launch download, it will create a package for you and you can then install it on your computer. You will see in the chat, I'm going to show you quickly two articles. So this is the first one that I'm going to post here. So it's very important before you install your software that you make sure that the firewall on your computer is not on for that time while you are actually installing it. Um, so I know especially um, at the corporate firms, it may, at corporate firms, it means that you might have to get your IT specialist in or your administrator to give you that access to install it. So this is quite important because what it does, it will install and it will look like it is installed, but certain areas might not work 100% because some of it is blocked by the firewall. And in some cases, it might not even install at all. So really, if you are installing, make sure that you have um, the right people to assist you if you don't have the um, admin rights on your computer. So this is the one document, and for if you do have an IT specialist, they will understand your firewall settings, your ports, and whatever you need to change there to ensure that it installs successfully. There is also another document, and I'm also going to put this on my screen, which will show you exactly your system requirement and prerequisitions if you are looking for that to see why it is maybe not working on your computer. But the most calls that we get from corporate firms about installing is definitely, firstly, where do I get my software? And secondly, then this firewall. So 
if you have that sorted, then you should be okay to go. Right, I'm going to close these because we're done with them. Then, um, where is my file site is saved? So if you have a server or a OneDrive or whatever you use, or if you use our cloud, then your files will be safe there. But it is very important that, except if you use our cloud server, but if you work on the file, that you have it saved in the right location. So if you look at it's on your C drive normally, program files, KSV data, and then it will be under your data, you'll have your KSV file. And why that is so important is because you, um, if certain events are run, especially in regards of XPR OWL, if that is relevant to you, it uses some of the scripts that's in the other folder. So if it's not saved here, if it's saved, for example, on your desktop or under my documents, then some of those might not execute correctly. So as soon as you start your process of the new year, make sure that the files that you use, like I say, is either in case of cloud or if not, that it is saved in your C drive under your program files. Okay. Then I'm just going to quickly have a look at the questions. No questions yet, so I'm going to continue. You guys are welcome. If there's any questions, I will keep an eye on them as well. Right, so if you work on case for working papers, there is two elements, and if you install it, you'll also see there's the two elements. The one is your case for working papers, which is the icon that's on your desktop, and then you have your template, which is either IFRS or SME. And the two, if you download it, where I showed you now, as a package, will install and will be in one package. But it is very important that you first have to install your working papers and then your template for it to work correctly. So if you download and install it at once, it will install in that order, so you don't have to worry about it. But if you maybe during the year have to give your computer in because they have to do something on it and you they format it and you get it back, you'll still see the working papers icon probably on your desktop, but your template won't be there. Install your working papers and then your template, and then um, you can work in that way. So very important. So if you have a file now that you want to update, the first thing that's going to happen after you install your software is you're going to get your working papers that update. So this doesn't change anything on your financials. You can update your working papers in any in, in any point of your engagement. It won't change anything. Your update on your financials is a separate pro is a separate process, and that I always advise to rather do either in the beginning or at the end of the engagement. Don't do it during your engagement. You do that when you are busy with your, your new set and then you do it on the latest and greatest template. But your working papers update that opens up like this, you can run quite successfully and it won't have any issues. It's always very good to back up, like this one prompts you to back up it in your documents. But before you start your new year, it's always good to back up. Then you have that saved before you start with the new year. Then I'm going to talk a bit about the update options and then I'll show it to you in a file. So there's three ways that you can create a file in Caseway. So the first one is a new file. That's very easy and simple. It's a new file. You've never done Caseway before. You've never used it before. You've got you've bought over a new entity. Then you'll do a new file. And that is very straightforward. But then you have two other options. The one we call file new from existing and the one we call the update options. So the file from existing, let me show it to you because it will just be easier. So if I go to a file here, the file from existing is if you go to new, then you have, for example, that, let me just say test there, and then you have here create file and import data. So if you just create a file, that will be your new option. You create file and import data, we call the file from existing. And what that basically does, it takes your previous file that you've had in Caseway and it will put it on the new template. But it takes a template as the, um, let's call it the master, compared to the previous year file. So any customization or anything that you have done in the previous year won't be in the new file. We have done quite a significant amount of work, but any input cells that you have had in the previous year file will retain. So if you, for example, have completed your PPE note, those yellow cells, they will return if you use the file from existing. 
So the question is then, why would you use that um, if you're not going to retain all your customization or anything like that? If you have an existing file, but you can't rely on that file, you maybe had somebody that um, did the file last year, but design mode, builder mode, change formulas, overwrote stuff. So you don't really know if the integrity at the back end of the file is still there or um, it is older than two versions. So if you have a very old file, it is advised that you rather use the file near from existing option because it gives you the template in the best state possible with as much retention as you can get. So it, it gives you more of a clean site, but it is um, much more um, stable than um, the, the other options might be if you're coming from an old um, option. Because KC, as you know, is quite a big program if you look at the file size and the software size and all of that. Um, so there's a lot in the front end, but there's even more going on in the back end. Um, so if you come from two, three year, three versions ago, something in the back end might have changed, and that's why we advise to then rather use that option. But like I say, we've done quite a bit of work for your data retention to still retain on that option. Um, so that will be quite successful to use as well. Then we have two update options and I'm just going to jump back into the file. Let me just look at my old file. So this is an old file that I have. So, so this is my previous year financials. I want to do it now for 2024. So if you open the file, first screen that you're going to get is that working purpose one that I've showed you. And then you're going to get one to say the financials were updated. So or do you want to update the financials? So I've not closed that screen already, but if I want to find it again, I can just click here on check for updates and then my update screen will come up. Just going to wait for that to load and check if we have some questions. Right, and this is how that update screen works. And if you click on the IFRS, it will give you the two options. It looks exactly the same as it did in SME. So the new replaced financial statements is basically a new file. So I would rather say use the file name from existing. You'll have much more data retention on there. Then you use this option if you have to pick between the two. The update financials, which is the second option, that retains the most of your customization if you've done a lot of customization. Um, and it only updates the sections that we have updated. I'll talk about customizations and sections a little bit later in more detail. But the second option is the one that if you have updated last year, you are on the, the template before this one, that one will be the most efficient for you to use. And you can run it normally takes a bit less time than this that we've got in here and that will update your file. So what it does, it takes your file and it goes and looks at the sections. So for example, PPE, we have included a table and put that table into your file. We always recommend that you are on the latest template, but I really would encourage you also to look at your roadmap, at your timeline in respect of when we release, when you have to produce financials, how does that fit into your timeline um, and not update in the middle of an engagement file. Right, so if I then go back to the slides. So like I said now, the update option, you have the full replace but it has your TV and your info store, so very similar to the file near. And then you have the section up that we just spoke about, which only update the changes that we have. We always try with any updates that we do, with any changes that we do, to do it on the lowest level. So if you think about a note and a subheading and a subheading, we'll try to do the subheading. We won't want the whole note to replace. Um, so that you have the least amount of impact, but you still get the updates and the compliance that you want from the template. We have also as part of the update option, this last element here, you get that red dot if you overwrite anything. So we have included that as well. So if you use that update that you can clearly see what is overridden, even if somebody had chosen not to show that before. 
Right, we've talked about those slides already and there is our update screen. So the only thing that I want to mention for SME that's a little bit different for Everest is we had to have quite a big release in 2022, which is now two years ago, but there might be some of you that's still on the old release, um, where you had to replace your financials. And the reason for that was is because we bought uh, in the new the optimizer and the technology that we had in IFRS already, which makes your files um, smaller, more responsive, and all that with the optimizer. Because it's a technology background change, we had to replace the whole set of financials. So if you do have an old phone update, you will see um, the whole story here. You have to um, replace the financials. That was in 2020. One, sorry, apologies. Then 2022, we had the ISO 315 changes from the auditors, and I'm sure you all went through that last year with with grace. Um, and because of that, all of the uh, document manager had to change because of 315. Now, I know not all of us use it, but for those that does, you will see that those have the new lead sheets in and everything. And that's why the updates for the financials and probe had to go together, even if you don't use the probe, because the document manager is a shared area in the financials. Right, then we've also introduced a notification manager. So we've had it before, but we didn't use it consistently. And I just want to draw your attention to it. So if you open your file and you have a little red bell like that, it means that there's a notification for you specifically on that um, file on that machine. So if you say do not show again, then you won't see the warning again. But what we will do if there's anything urgent that we feel is, um, let's call it mission, <laughs> mission critical, but you have to apply, we will put it in the notification manager. So we'll probably will send out an email as well. We probably will send it, put it on our community, but we'll also put it in the software for if you don't go to our community or um, or in your emails every day. So just keep an eye out for it. Like from our November release up until now, no notifications have gone out, so nothing missed there. But just keep an eye out for there if you do see that coming through. Right, and something new that we've introduced is our data retention view. And um, what this came, uh, how this came about is because we had clients that asked us, um, what changed in my financials? How do I know? So like I say, we have the release notes and we write beautiful stories in there on why we change things. But this is a quick and easy way in the software, how you can see um, what I've changed. So I'm going to also jump again back in the financials. And now I just have to check, this is my right one. So this is a file that I've updated. So my update has already run. And then if you go here to document, you'll see you have now here a new menu that's called data retention view. And I can now click on view all content that has been inserted. And what it does, it goes through the file. So it it is a, a process, like I said, there's quite a lot of uh, background documents that it has to go through, but it will give you a list of everything that has changed on the left hand side. You can then click on it and you can jump to that area to see what has changed. So if I refer to the release notes, like I say, beautiful stories written there, but this is also a way that you can see in the software what has changed and what not. So for this is a, a IFRS file, so we're just going to give it some time to run. Um, so here we expect, like I said, accounting policies that have changed should be something that is inserted because it's completely new. So let's just give that a second to run. And I'm quickly going to look on the other side, just if we have any questions. And while that runs, I'm also going to send you guys all the links in the chat of what I am going to refer to today, just if you want to copy it out or if you want to have it available. So like you see now, there's two areas here on the left hand side, accounting policies, ICP. And if I click on it, I jump to it and it shows me you've now got an option of all the accounting policy, new accounting policies and everything that has changed. And this is how you can easily see what has changed. What we've also done on the release notes, I'm just going to show you that, 
is that same reference that you have there, that ACP053. We have tried to also include it where relevant. So, like for example, there's the new standards, which haven't been inserted, it was updated, so you wouldn't see it in my screen now that I showed, but that is the new standards change that was brought through, and you will see the note 047 is the same reference that you have there. Okay, let's get back to the slides. Right, then I'm going to spend a little bit of time on customization of notes. So, um, and just take you through the process. So, if I again jump back into my file, if you have a note that you want to add on any part of your financials, then we advise to use the super insert function, which is this green plus at the top. It's been around for quite a long time, I think about six, seven years, if I'm not, not mistaken. And you can insert quite a bit. So you can insert a new node, you can insert a text section, which will look like that, or you can do a table. So let's say if you do a table, then you'll have various tables that you can include. Let me just move that over. So you'll have various options. And if you click on it, um, you will see that it comes up um, at the bottom as an example of how it will look. So if you have um, a lot of customization that you want to do, we always at these different options that you can do. You can either go on a course, a champion course, and it teaches you how to do it in the right way. You can get consulting to do it for you. But if you have just like one or two extra notes or a little bit more detail that you want to add, then the super insert will be more than sufficient for you to change the information that you want. So if I look now here, this is the stand, that is the heading. So this is already the one that I've included in here. And I can then go and build that further. So if I want to add some mapping, I can say table rows, and I can say link to map below, and I want five rows and I can go and link that. So this is really a quick, easy way. If you have, like I say, one or two extra notes that you want to build, you can build as many as you want. But it's, what is very, very important is to always stand on the top of the notes where you want to add them. And why that is so important is because the subsections that I talked about earlier, if you have a note, if you think about a big risk management note like if it's nine, then you'll have a lot of subsections in there. If we want to change something, we will change it at the lowest subsection that we can. If you don't stand on the heading to insert a new area, then and say you stand in the subsection, then it creates a subsection of a subsection. If you think about a Word document, it then becomes a layer of a layer. And the problem is then if we replace that section because of a compliance or another change, then you'll lose that note that you've built because you have now built it in a subsection. So very important if you do use the super insert function to please stand at the top of the note that will really help you to retain that note when you update and to um, use that optimally. Okay, so that is super insert. Then, the next one I want to look at, uh, look at is customized note. You have the options to restrict a note. So again, if I go back to this note, if you right click on here, you have this restrict updates. And as soon as you click on it, you'll see that a little lock appears next to it. What this does is if you run the update that I've showed you in the beginning, then this note will not update. Now, this, this it can be used very beneficial because like, for example, this other one note, I, I don't want that to update. I probably want it to look exactly the same each year on year and I don't want it to change. If I ever use that restrict update on another note, so you can use it on any note that you want to. For example, going concern. If you're going concern, that should change, but let's say it doesn't, you want it to stay exactly the same, then the lock should be, you can use the lock. But if we make a change to that note, it means it won't update. So if we had a PPE note and new disclosure came out for PPE, you've used that lock functionality, then what means is it will keep your old note and you won't have visibility of the new compliance and content that comes in. So it must be used selectively and it then, when there is an update, it's important to go and double check that there's nothing that should have updated that didn't. If you read the release notes, for example, 
then you will get like your tax have updated, but you've spent a significant amount of building the tax, so you, you've locked it, then you won't get that update. So use definitely for customized notes, because then you know it's safe and secure, we won't touch it, but if it comes to notes that we can update, it's very important to make sure that there's not a compliance change that you're then missing in the process. And then the other one that I just want to show you is, and where this is I find is the most beneficial, is if you have a group of companies. So if I've built a note or I've customized a note or I've completed a note that is the same in all my sets of financials, then I can right click on it and I can say content version management, get new version, and I can have two options from library or other case view file. So if I want, if I have a scenario that I just explained, company A had a beautiful note, I've built it, I've spent time on it, and now I want to also use it in the subsidiary, which is company B. Then you can say other case view file, and they're gonna give you a warning. Oh, sorry, I think it's because it's restricted, but it's still gonna go, so I can still show you where to find the file. Then, and you can go and select the file that you want to copy it from. So it's because that one is restricted, so just, you just do the next one. And then what you do is you'll browse for it. So again, in your data folder, and I'm just gonna use that one for example, and you look for the file that's got the FSNG in it, like that one, and you can just select that and open. And what it will do is it will look at the properties of that note, and that note it will bring into your new file. So if you want to copy notes between files, this is a very efficient way of doing it. It is recommended that you only do this on files that are on the same template, or on the same version number. Because if you think about it, again, if I've now changed something, we've changed something in the tax note, you have it, now you copy over old content from a previous year, then something can potentially break because now we've updated mapping or we've included some rows and now you're not going to have it. So it's really the best case where you can use this is between files, same year, and in the same group of companies, we said very relevant. That same function can be used if you have a broken note in some way. So you have now deleted something by accident or you want it back in its original form from the template. So what you can do then is you can again right click on it. I'm just gonna wait for that too, because it thinks it needs to find it now. So you're again going to right click, and then you're going to go to content and version management, get new version from library. If you do that, then it goes to your template. So at any point in time, if a note um, is not giving you the results that you want, or like I say, you've perhaps accidentally deleted something and you wanted the rows and now it's not there anymore, then you can get that note back from the library. And then that, you, so you won't have to do a new file, it's just that section that then gets replaced. And that is that slide from there. So I'm going to look again. I see there's no questions. I'm going to give a moment and ask if there's anybody that has a question that they want to share. I don't see any specific questions to your scenario. We're not a big group, so I can quickly cover them before I'm gonna um, before we finish off. Okay, no questions? Okay, fantastic. So, um, just some other resources to make you aware of. You've got, the, we've got a YouTube channel. We're trying to post all our new videos on there. So, if there's anything that you maybe are not sure of, you can definitely go and have a look there on the YouTube channel. That's the first QR that you see there on the right. And see if it is something there that can help you. We also have a LinkedIn group where we try to post especially events and new and relevant information, which you can also look at, release notes I've spoken about. And then also in the document manager, we have at the top financial settlement support cases. 
work parent, a busy app that you guys. But what it does is anything that we see happens in the market um, a lot, or we have a lot of questions on, or people struggling with, we give some links there to what can also help you. So it's updated continuously as support cases and everything come through. And because it's a link to a website, you will have it, um, the access to it immediately. Okay. I am going to check again. No questions. I want to thank everybody for their time. I hope it was beneficial to you and you found it interesting. Oh, I actually got a question. Um, if we roll forward a case of file, the changes are made in description in the properties mode. Okay. So, so what um, I'm going to. I'm not going to try and pronounce your name because I definitely will get it wrong. But what she's referring to is if you go, for example, to your loans, a very relevant that note that we currently know, and you change this and you go right click properties and you go make that company one. And then if you roll forward, then that company one is not always there. So it goes back to group company one, like that, for example. So, um, so there is a way that you can retain that information. And the way to do it is you have to go and change it in your extended description. So where you do that is if I go to, oh, sorry, let me just get my right file now, which is this one. So if you go to account, assign mapping numbers, And you go to your balance sheet and you go, well, you can go to anything, but let's go to lands and group companies now. And you want to change that. Then what you need to do is you need to go to properties and you have to change the extended description. Now I'm just going to quickly go through this. Oh, sorry, plus data. So extended description. So this here is the information that pulls through to your financials. So everywhere where you see there's automatically a name, interest, revenue, other income, it doesn't actually pull through from the mapping, it does pull through from here. And you can change it here. So you will change the third one and that will then retain. I'll send you also a link to the detail exactly on how to do it and then you have that as well. How oh dear Ali. Um, there is, we are working in the next release to, to change that and see if we can retain that properties because it is something that has come up quite a bit from the market. So we're all working to see that you don't have to do this, but in the interim, this will be your solution for that to retain, especially to your loans that um, stays quite consistent for names. Okay. I see there's no further questions. I'm going to pause the webinar. You guys are welcome to post questions. I will keep it open for the next five minutes or so if there's anything specific that you want to ask me. If not, I hope you have a lovely day and thank you for joining me today. I've got a question from somebody to ask if the recording will be referred to later on. Yes, the recording will be sent out. Normally, it just takes a day or so for it to be downloaded and edited and then the marketing team will send it to you.
Okay, for everybody still online, thank you very much. I'm going to end the webinar now. You're welcome to reach out to me directly. You do have my email address. Thanks, bye.